Many people, however, have given themselves a low-grade ADHD or ADD because of the way that they move through their world. They are looking at their phone a lot of the time. It's actually very easy to anchor your attention to your phone for the following reason. First of all, it's very restricted in size. So it's very easy to limit your visual attention to something about this big. It's one of the um, design features of the phone. The other is that just as you, you've probably heard a picture is worth a thousand words, well, a movie is worth 10,000 pictures. Anytime we're looking at things that have motion, visual motion, our attentional system will naturally gravitate towards them, it, towards those movies. It's actually much harder to read words on a page than it used to be for many people because we're used to seeing things spelled out for us in YouTube videos or videos where things move and are very dramatic. It is true that the more that we look at those motion stimuli, the more that we're seeing movies of things and things that are very dramatic and very intense, the worse we're getting at attending to things like text on a page or to listening to something like a podcast and extracting the information. So much so that, you know, I think many people have asked me, hey, you know, why aren't you providing intense visuals for us to look at? Well, frankly, it's because a lot of people are consuming this content through pure auditory, just by listening. And I want them to be able to digest all the material. But in addition to that, if you think about the areas of life that dictate whether or not we become successful, independent, healthy individuals, most of those involve the kind of boring practices of digesting information on a page. Boring because it's not as exciting in the moment, perhaps, as watching a movie or something being spoon-fed to, to us. But the more attention that we can put to something, even if it's fleeting and we feel like we're only getting little bits and pieces, shards of the information as opposed to the entire thing, that has a much more powerful effect in engaging this cholinergic system for plasticity than does, for instance, watching a movie. And that's because when we watch a movie, it can the entire thing can be great. It can be awesome. It can be this overriding experience. But I think for all those experiences, if you're somebody who's interested in building your brain and expanding your brain and getting better at various things, feeling better, doing better, et cetera, one has to ask, how much of my neurochemical resources am I devoting to the passive experience of letting something just kind of overwhelm me and excite me? versus something that I'm really trying to learn and take away. And now there's another, I enjoy movie content and TV content all the time. I scroll Instagram often, but we are limited in the extent to which we can grab a hold of these acetylcholine release mechanisms or epinephrine. And I think that we need to be careful that we don't devote all our acetylcholine and epinephrine, all our dopamine for that matter, to these passive experiences of things that are not going to enrich us and better us. So that's a little bit of an, uh, of an editorial on my part, but the phone is rich with movies. It's rich with information. The real question is, is the information rich in, for us in ways that grow us and cultivate smarter, more emotionally, uh, you know, emotionally evolved or uh, people, or is it creating, how's, what's it doing for our physical well being for that matter? So, I don't want to tell people what to do or not to do, but think carefully about how often you're focusing on something and how good you are or poor you are at focusing on something that's challenging. So once you get this epinephrine, this alertness, you get the acetylcholine released and you can focus your attention, then the question is for how long? And in an earlier podcast, I talked about these ultradian cycles that last about 90 minutes. The typical learning bout should be about 90 minutes. I think that learning bout will no doubt include five to 10 minutes of warm up period. I think everyone should give themselves permission to not be fully focused in the early part of that bout, but that in the middle of that bout for the middle hour or so, you should be able to maintain focus for about an hour or so. So that for me means eliminating distractions. That means turning off the Wi-Fi. I put my phone in the other room. If I find myself reflexively getting up to get the phone, I will take the phone and lock it in the car outside. If I find myself going to get it anyway, I am guilty of um, giving away the phone um, for a period of time or even things more dramatic. I've uh, thrown it up on my roof before, so I can't get to it till the end of the day. That thing is pretty compelling and we come up with all sorts of reasons why we need to be in contact with it. But I encourage you to try experiencing what it is 
to be completely immersed in an activity where you feel the agitation that your attention is drifting, but you continually bring it back. And that's an important point, which is that attention drifts, but we have to re-anchor it. We have to keep grabbing it back. And the way to do that, if you're sighted, is with your eyes. That as your attention drifts and you look away, you want to try and literally maintain visual focus on the thing that you're trying to learn. Feel free to blink, of course, but you can greatly increase your powers of focus and the rates of learning which is anchored in all the work of Merzenich, Hubel and Weasel and others.